folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. My name's Eleanor and this is my wrap up for July. I read 17 things in July. Um, it sounds like a lot. It's possibly not quite as much as it seems because there's a lot of short stuff. But still, I read 17 things in July and it was a fair variety too. So um, I started the month with listening to an audio book called The Australian Dream by Stan Grant. Um, this was the audio book version of his quarterly essay from a few years back by the same name, The Australian Dream, um, which was sort of inspired, it's essentially was the essay that was inspired by what was going on with Adam Goods um, and that whole controversy of him being booed um, and Stan Grant's own experience as an Indigenous man in the media um, and has then gone on to inspire the documentary, uh, The Australian Dream. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting and it's an ex. what I think I found most fascinating about it was he actually dug into like immigration and found parallels, if I'm remembering correctly, between the way immigrants feel in Australia and face racism and the way indigenous people face racism, um, which is really, really quite interesting when, when you're considering the you know, the original inhabitants versus more recent immigrants. Um, it's been a while now, so I can't remember the complete details, but it was very interesting. Um, so I listened to that. I also listened to uh, The Girl Reporter by Tansy Rand Roberts on um, her Ship Might Fly podcast. I've been trying to catch up on that a little bit. Um, I'm very behind because I tend to leave stories until... They're finished on the podcast to read. And this is actually a reread for me. I read this when it was originally published by um, uh, the book Smugglers. Um, so, but this was rereading via audio. And of course, The Girl Reporter is, I think, the third story in the Cooker, cu Cookie Cutter Superhero Universe, which is the universe that Tansy started um, for I think, Kaleidoscope. Um, where every country in the world has machines and those machines spit out um, every six months superheroes, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, so that was uh, Girl Reporter. This was particu in particular examining the trope of the girl reporter um, who, you know, always tends to be a bit of a sidekick in superhero narratives. In this case, it was the girl reporter telling her story. Um, so there was that. Then I hit some Hugo reading in that I had to read, at least try and read some of the novellas. I didn't quite finish the novellas. There were two novellas I didn't read, um, but I did read three of them and one I had previously read. So um, I read The Deep by Rivers Solomon with David Diggs, William Hudson and Jonathan Snipes, aka Clipping. So this, is, this novella is... Inspired by the song that got a Hugo nomination a few years ago, The Deep, uh, which, as I found out in the uh, afterword, the essay um, written by Clipping at the end, was actually, their song was actually inspired by a, a previous, like, musical work, um, which didn't, I don't think, had lyrics. But, so, and it was, so, the novella was sort of expanding that story but also not entirely the same story but they described it like a version like playing the game telephone but with narrative so you know the original version is not quite the same as the clipping version and the deep is again not quite the same as the clipping version uh but it was an interesting kind of um novella about Basically, the idea is that pregnant slaves were thrown overboard into the ocean to drown. But because they were pregnant, the babies were already in amniotic fluid and therefore they could be born and the ocean turned them into essentially a mermaid type creature. Um, not your traditional mermaids, but um, like your Disney type mermaids, but a, a new race born of, of African slaves. Um, and in this particular story, um, we're seeing it from the point of view of the historian and the way they deal with collective memory is that it's all brought into the historian so that it doesn't ha burden the rest of their society. Um, but it 
comes at the cost of the, the historian's own mental health. But once a year, the historian distributes the memory for a few days and then brings it back into herself. And in this case, the historian decided to run away instead and had to go on her own journey of being and then accepting the fact that, you know, she had to go back to her people who had, you know, nearly starved themselves in the meantime because they were burdened by this memory and they were creating problems. Um, and they ended up, you know, sharing the memory. But, um, but so it's full of ideas of, you know, collective memory and history and its importance and the fact that it's a burden. But if we don't have that collective history and collective memory, then who are we? Um, so that was interesting. Um, then there was This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Matar and Max Gladstone. Um, this probably deserves the praise that it's been getting. Um, I think it won the Hugo. Um, and I was entirely unsurprised that it won the Hugo. Um, because at the start of August, because um, it it's it's co-written and it's it's two agents who are working their way on separate sides trying to fix time in the way or direct time the timeline in the way they want it to go to um but they end up writing each other letters secret letters and falling in love with each other uh and it's a very sweet story i found it very easy to read it just kind of flowed off the page um, which is an experience i've had with the miles writing before so um yeah i thought it was a very sweet story um very interesting like time traveliness um but yeah overall a sweet story that was a, a good read so um then of course the last novella was the haunting of tram car 015 by peter jelly clark peter jelly clark has had a lot of hugo nominations in recent years um i've quite enjoyed their work um and this one was fun it was essentially set in Egypt in an alternate history of Egypt in like the early 1900s um, in a world where because previous to the story, a thing had happened and Jin, Jin had been brought back into Egypt um, from the other side of the spirit barrier plane or whatever. Um, Egypt was now a world power alongside Britain and America, etc., um, and had in fact booted the British colonial power out of Egypt. But this particular story set is, it's really interesting because it's set on the backdrop of a vote to give women the vote in parliament and a whole bunch of suffragette action in Egypt that probably didn't happen in the actual timeline. But essentially it's about these two investigators who are trying to figure out what is haunting this tram car where it's from and how are they going to get rid of it and it feel it feels like an agatha christie mystery but with like spirits and gin um and it, and suffragettes having shenanigans and i really enjoyed it i thought it was a really fun read so um i'd love to see more in this universe i believe there is a short story that is like the event that started this particular timeline um which i haven't had a chance to read but i'd love to see more in this universe i think it's great I love to see more of these detective shenanigans happening. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And then I finally, finally finished reading uh, Maya Angelou, The Complete Poetry. So as you can see, there are a lot of tabs. I tabbed a lot in this. I initially picked this up about two years ago and I'd read a little bit then and I read a chunk last year, but I picked this up again when everything started happening in June with the Black Lives Matter movement because Maya Angelou says it better than I ever can. And she's such a powerful poet. Seriously powerful. It's my kind of poetry, the kind of poetry I really like, which is plain English, not too much metaphor, not too much confusing, you know, stuff that I don't quite understand. But it's plain English, but it's powerful plain English. And it talks on brilliant topics um there's a there's a lot of poems about religion which i actually didn't mind um i can kind of sometimes shy away because i hate 
that evangelical type stuff. But I found a lot of the poetry in here really, really moving on that end. And like the last, I think like the last poem is a eulogy for Nelson Mandela. And I just cried. I was like so, so moved. So I really, really recommend you read my Angelou. Some of her stuff is so angry. Um, some of it is so She's so proud of being a black woman um, and she's so fierce, but she also is so compassionate and so spiritual and she's just amazing. Like I can see why she was beloved and she's so award winning and it all, you know, all this sort of stuff. Like she was amazing. Um, and, and her creative gift is a sad loss, but I really recommend Maya Angelou's poetry. Even if you don't get the complete poems, even if you get like a small collection or something, really, really recommend it. Like I said, I tabbed liberally. So there was that. And then, then at the end of the month, what happened? But um, at the same time, as I was attending Worldcom virtually and do, ran, consuming so much in the way of panels and stuff, I ended up ending up winding down in the evenings. Am I reading Shauna Maguire? So I finished That Ain't Witchcraft, which I was part way through, uh, which is, I think, the eighth book. Not the most recent. It's the one that was published last year. Um, there has been another one published this year, which I have on order. Um, it's another one starring Antimony Price, the youngest of the Price siblings, uh, who's not my favourite, but anyway. But I really quite enjoyed this. And in this... In the previous book, she made a deal with the Crossroads. This is the book where, as well as being on the run from a covenant, um, the Crossroads call in the favour that she owes them. And they wanted to kill a guy. Um, and that guy happens to want to destroy the Crossroads because they took something from him without paying for it. Um, so shenanigans then ensue and it... Yeah, it was a fun book. It was an interesting book. Um, and I really love this encrypted series, like, a lot. So so I finished that in a couple of evenings. And then, <laughs> then I thought, well, I'm in the mood for encrypted. I'm in the mood for Sean and Maguire. So what did I do? I went and acquired all the short fiction in <laughs> the encrypted universe. There is a lot. That entire page in two columns of short fiction, individual short fiction. Some of it is in um, anthologies, which means it isn't available publicly outside of those anthologies, but I happened to have most of it in from the 2018 Hugo packet, where it was the first time Encrypted was in the best series category. Um, and she put in the stories that were in other anthologies and so I actually had those and the rest of the stories which is the majority of them are available on her website so uh in July in July I read 10 of those stories yes there's more coming in August but in July I read the first 10 of those individual short stories so they're all let's just say my Goodreads count jumped a lot uh, so the stories that I read in July in fact, at the very end of July, were The Flower of Arizona, One Hell of a Ride, No Place Like Home, Stingers and Strangers, Married in Green, Sweet Poison Wine, The First Fall, Lock and Key, We Both Go Down Together, and Oh Pretty Bird. And so these are most, all of those ones, those 10 stories, are prequel stories involving um, um, the... Healy's. So before the Price family comes into it, um, the Healy's had fled to America. So their son, uh, Enid and Alexander's son, I'm trying to remember the family tree. I think it, I think it was there. So it's Francis is who is the grandmother who married into the family, who he met, the son met in this, ah, that Price family tree. No, that's Alice and Enid. Uh, Alice is their child. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so it was Francis and 
I don't think it was Alexander. Might have been Alexander. Healy. Anyway, the Healy boy met Fran in the flower of Arizona and brought her home. And um, so that first 10 stories is them getting to know each other, them falling in love, them getting married, them having various adventures um, as a family, hunting hunting monsters, but also, you know, helping various encrypteds who are in a spot of trouble. Uh, so that's the first 10 of those about the Healy family. Um, yeah, so that's what I rounded out my month with, was 10 short encrypted stories. Um, they're very in length. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure none of them are novellas, but I think they're mostly short stories. Some might edge onto novelette territory, but yeah. So, uh, 10 of those. Yay! Much fun. And that is the 17 things that I read in July. So, um, yeah. Great. Woo! <laughs> so, yes. Um, I guess... I will see you all again really soon. Bye.